Pete, how are you? Good, Douglas. How are you? Doing fine, thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. So you've got a book out called This Indian Kid, a Native American Memoir. And it looks like you've had a career, very successful career as a writer. How many books do you have published at this point? It's my second. This is your second one published? Yes. Were you doing journalistic writing before? Uh, every once in a while I'll do something like maybe a book review, but as far as day to day, uh, no, uh, no journalistic writing, even though I'm a copy editor. Okay, a copy editor, that's what you do as a career? Right. Okay. Well, it looks like you've won some awards. Was with the awards for your previous book? Let's see. The uh, Well, the O. Henry Award, yeah, it was for uh, a story that appeared in the book. Uh, as far as, uh, like the Stanford Fellowship, that was based on a writing portfolio that you submitted. Uh, I've won some journalism awards, too. So this is a memoir of your life. It says that uh, you grew up in the 70s uh, with divorced parents. You attended 13 different schools. So you moved like every year, basically? Yeah, sometimes two or three times a year. Why was that? It was just a, I guess it would be from my... My mom's husband, my stepdad, sometimes he would get a new job somewhere, uh, for instance, and we'd pack up and leave and without really knowing how long we'd be there, then uh, his job ended and here we go again, you know. I went to one school for three hours. Three hours? <laughs> yeah, we moved all the way to Texas and uh, mom took me to school to get me enrolled. So it wasn't until after lunch that I actually got enrolled and was in a class. They sang me the school song, asked me how long I was going to be there. I told them probably forever, you know, like I was just a kid, you know. So at three o'clock, my mom picks me up and all our stuff is uh, packed up, you know, in the back again. Back to Oklahoma after three hours. <laughs> I was like, that's kind of an extreme example. Usually it was like if I finished the school, and then uh, sometimes I knew that would be my last day there and we'd move or uh, usually I lasted the school year is what I'm trying to say, not leave after three hours. Okay, so were, were all of these schools, I mean, was this all over the country that you moved? No, Oklahoma. Oh, so you stayed in the state, you just moved from... I stayed in the state, yeah. But uh, after, you know, I did graduate high school and... Uh, I got tired of uh, writing sports when I was, uh, I'd already been doing it for about over 10 years. And it says I started when I was 16 and I started looking into an art school in Santa Fe, the Institute of American Indian Art. And uh, after I graduated from there, I won that Stanford fellowship. And it seems like ever since then, it's been uh, constantly on the move, either for jobs or usually job related or so I've been here in Minneapolis now be four years at the end of October and I think that's a record for me through my whole life of being in any one spot for four years yeah yeah four years what what got you interested in writing why did you start writing I think it's because I lived with my grandparents out in the country near Muskogee Oklahoma uh a lot of times it was just me. I didn't have my brother or sisters with me. They were probably living with the, probably living with my mom in town. So a lot of times it was just me, me and my dog. And my grandma used to take me to the library a lot. And I would stack up on books. So I did a lot of reading. Uh, I didn't like today where you could just camp out in front of the TV, you know, and watch anything you want at your fingertips. Then we just had like a black and white TV with three stations, ABC, NBC, CBS, and maybe PBS. So uh, it was up to me to occupy myself basically. And I don't know, I just uh, started writing this story one time about uh, 
the uh, cartoon character on the front of a Mountain Dew bottle. I wrote that he ran away from home. Everyone was worried about him. They got a search party together, and they found him hiding in a tree. Uh, I don't know why I wrote that, but my grandma saved it. She uh, folded it up and put it in an envelope yeah, from when I was like six or seven. I think it maybe all the books I was reading, I was just trying to copy or emulate what I had been reading, maybe. So I used to practically live at the library. I would have my grandma to take me there and drop me off, and I'd spend, you know, a whole day there in Muskogee. Wasn't that a cheetah on the Mountain Dew? No, that's for, uh, on the Mountain Dew is a quote-unquote hillbilly. Oh, what am I thinking of the cheetah? Cheetah is like those uh, chips, oh. Fritos. <laughs> oh, Cheetos, yeah, okay. Cheetos, yeah. Oh, that's the one. Um, all right, so why did you decide to write a memoir at this point? Well, on that book of short stories I had written, uh, there were some incidents from my childhood that came out and it even surprised me when I got, you know, my memory, uh, my memory card going. Even though they didn't fit into the stories that I was writing at the time, I uh, made side notes uh, of those. And one piece that uh, didn't get into the uh, collection of short stories about uh, middle school and Tishomingo, I fleshed that out about 20 pages and sent it to my agent and he really liked it and he was thinking it, it was his idea he goes if you uh, i think it'd be interesting if you could come up do you have uh, you know any more to make a book link project and that's how that got started was from like stuff that i left out of uh short stories i had written before because it just didn't fit so that's why it's all focused on uh up until high school everything in there is uh happened we know when i when i was a kid I, I did a little bit of a finish up job at the end kind of wrapping up where i am now and stuff but all the stories and stuff is about growing up in in oklahoma uh can you give us one antidote from the book yeah uh when uh started first grade at five but i was living with my uh grandparents in the rural Oklahoma before I went to first grade and uh so I didn't go to head start or kindergarten but I knew how to tell time and uh, add and basic stuff so by the time I started first grade it's my first day of class I was the only one who knew uh, who could tell time I guess because the teacher pointed at the clock and asked any uh can anybody tell me what time it is and no one made a move or was staring around or acting like they didn't know. And I just calmly, you know, said, eight, you know, it's 810, you know, like, what's the big deal? <laughs> but I was taught that by my grandparents. So shortly after that, first day of school, the teacher pulls out her paddle for some reason. I guess just to show the kids that I've got a paddle, but I, I was terrified of it. So on that first day, as we lined up to go to the lunchroom, I peeled off and walked home. Which surprised my mom because she thought, what are you, what are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be in school. Don't you eat at, at school? I thought you were eating at school, and uh, I didn't know what to tell her. Anyway, she drove me back to school, waved by as I'm walking in. Unfortunately, there was another kid there who just happened to be at the door and open the door for me and said, uh, Miss Parker's going to get you with that paddle for uh, leaving school. Well, that was the wrong thing to say because I went in the front door. My mom saw me, but there was a set of double doors in the back. And after the kid said that, I just went in the front door and went out the back and ran away from school on my first day. They had to get a search party together. They let out the senior class, the 12th graders, and, uh, one kid hunted me down with his uh, rabbit dogs. So I guess I was gone for uh, two or three hours, but that was my uh, infamous first day of school. Why was she gonna paddle you for knowing how to tell time? No, it wasn't just for me. It was like a general uh, 
she gave a little tail time lesson, and it was just part of her uh, welcome to first grade. Now, here's my paddle kind of deal. I don't know why she brought up. I guess she just wanted the kids to know, I've got a paddle here, so you better straighten up or act straight. Oh, so it was, uh, okay. <laughs> she, yeah, she it just wasn't wanted... nothing that I did. It was just, welcome to class. My name's Miss Parker. Here's my paddle, which didn't sit well with me. She wanted to let everybody know who was boss. I guess so. I mean, I think Oklahoma still allows corporal punishment. From what I, I did a little research on that. I think, in other words, it's up to the school districts and there are still districts at Paddle. Uh, is the book out now? Yes, it came out yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Published by, published by Scholastic. I guess it's too early to ask how it's doing. Yeah, I mean, it's one day. I mean, I've gotten some good reviews. Okay, do you plan on writing another book? Yes, I do. I haven't started on it yet, but, uh, well, I've done some preliminary work. What's this one going to be about? It's going to be about uh, this uh, Native American art family that I knew in uh, Muskogee. Uh, the, the father uh, died of a accidental gun gunshot wound at age 26. And he was on his way to becoming this uh, superstar in the Native American art world. And he left behind a legacy that they turned into the Drone Tiger Art Company. And his brother also became a well-known artist. And it was just such a, a uh, kind of otherworldly uh, family to encounter back then. You know, they had a two-story house with uh, many bathrooms, a swimming pool, a tennis court. Mercedes Benz, Lincolns, Cadillacs. I mean, it was like walking into fantasy world. But uh, I thought I might do something with that because I've been involved with Native American art. It seemed like my whole life, my uncles uh, were artists, painters, sculptor, and then my friends there in Oklahoma. Then I wound up going to an art school, Native American art school. So I think it's going to deal with Native American art. Oh, okay. Is that painting behind you? Did you do that? No, that was... Uh, Actually, a friend of mine who graduated the uh, art school with me, Jack Sabon, S-A-B-O-N. It's a uh, a gray wolf. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. yeah, the thing about that is, no matter where you are in the room, it's staring right at you. <laughs> the eyes follow you, yeah. Yeah. What's it, what's actually that? There's a part in my book where my uh, great grandma, Full Blood Creek, she lived to be in her to her 80s and never went to a powwow because that wasn't this wasn't the thing when she was growing up. Powwows. So she's lived her whole life and never went to a single powwow. But uh, she also had a theory about uh, well, when she was getting older, she'd be in her room and sitting on a chair and watching TV. You know how the newscasters are looking right at you. She figured, well, now if I move to my bed, I, they won't be looking at me because how can they look at me when I'm in my chair and in my bed at the same time? Yeah, it's kind of an optical illusion. Uh, it, Eddie, we got to wind this down. We are out of time. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, the book is called This Indian Kid, a Native American Memoir. And you said the book is out. Do you have a website you want to give out? No website, but they can order it at their local bookshop or online. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thanks again for coming on. It was nice meeting you. Best of luck with the book. Hope it does well. Thanks a lot, Douglas.